Hello. This video is to demonstrate my Mechanum robot. The robot includes Mechanum wheels, which allow the robot to travel in any direction. At least any direction that could be reached using wheels. I haven't got it to fly or to tunnel underground just yet. As well as being able to turn and drive forwards and backwards, it can also move side to side and diagonally. Before we look at the special feature of the Mechanum wheels, here is a short clip of it driving normally. This uses the same principles as used by the other robots I've covered, although using four driving wheels rather than the two driving wheels on most robots, or the tank tracks on the T200. Next I'll be explaining about the Mechanum wheels, as well as the design of the chassis, which I designed on FreeCAD and then 3D printed. I'll explain about the motor controllers used, and finally the code along with an explanation of how I controlled it using a keyboard and a wireless USB joypad controller. First to look at the wheels, which are the key part in this robot. These have a black cylindrical wheel shaped the same as the regular wheel, but then inside the wheel, the green coloured rollers are mounted around the wheel diagonally. There are two different wheels with the rollers in different directions. These are mounted with the wheels diagonally opposite having the rollers in the same direction. The front left and rear right wheels have the rollers with the front of the roller on the left, and for the front right and rear left wheels the front of the rollers are on the right. The special thing about these wheels is that when they are moving together, as you would on a normal four wheel robot, then they will act like normal wheels, as you've seen before. But when you try to drive the wheels against each other, such as having the wheels on the left trying to drive in opposite directions, then the rollers take effect which moves the robot in a different direction. This is best explained showing the wheels in action. Here's a short bit of video showing the robot moving around and then I'll show you how these work. Moving forward, as you would expect, if you drive all four motors in the forward direction, then the robot moves forward. The same principle if you move all four motors in reverse, they cause the robot to go backwards. Turning left and right is also the same as robots with standard wheels, or a good analogy is the caterpillar tracks on the tank robot I covered previously. If you have the left side moving backwards and the right side moving forwards, then the robot will turn on the spot in the left direction, and vice versa for the robot to turn right. You could also have the robot turn and move at the same time by varying the speed of the left and right side. If you had all four wheels going forward, but had say the left motors running twice as fast as the right motors, then it would turn to the right whilst moving forward. So far, this is as you would expect with any four wheel robot vehicle. This changes if you have the wheels driving against each other. To move sideways, you have the two motors on one side moving inwards against each other, and the other side with the two motors pushing outwards against each other. Then the direction of the robot is based on the rollers, which drive the robot sideways towards the two wheels that are driving inwards. The same if you want to move in the opposite direction but the direction of the wheels are reversed. Finally, if you just use the two diagonally opposite motors and leave the other two motors off, then the robot will move in a diagonal direction. I've just shown it going forwards here, but if you drove the motor in reverse instead of forward, then it would move diagonally backwards. There are a few other things you can do, such as having the robot steer with just the front or rear wheels, which will corner differently compared to using all four wheels. The problem with using more features is the complexity for a person controlling the robot. So if you're controlling it manually using either a keyboard or a controller, then the ones covered should be enough to cover all the different options you need. Obviously you'll need appropriate motors to go with the wheel. I've used micro metal gear motors 
with push header shims which are useful if you don't want to have to solder to the motors. They come with various gear ratios and the one I used is 298 to 1 which gives a reasonable speed such that it's easy to control even when running at full speed. The chassis is created in FreeCAD. Here is the basic shape. The front is to the right which is angled inwards. This is an early prototype, the main difference being that I added fill around the Raspberry Pi supports to give it more strength. The size is determined by roughly the maximum length that I could fit onto a 3D printer, with space for a Raspberry Pi Zero at the rear, a breadboard in the centre and 4 times AA battery holder in the front. The Raspberry Pi is mounted at the rear so it's possible to get to the ports on the Raspberry Pi, which is useful for connecting a USB controller and perhaps connecting to a screen if you have to debug the network connection. There are also mounting holes at the front which allow additional accessories to be added, such as a camera mount, distance sensor or a line follow add-on. There are also 3D printed mounts for the motors. Here are the 3D printed parts shown in MeshLab, which is a convenient viewer for the STL files used for 3D printing. This allows me to show the motor brackets in position on the chassis. As you can see, it has a flat base underneath, which is useful for 3D printing. Here are the four mounts which line up with the Raspberry Pi Zero. The Raspberry Pi is raised above the level of the motors, which makes it possible to remove the SD card if required, and also allows access to the camera connector. The infill between the supports was added to prevent the supports from breaking. The central area is slightly recessed and fits a breadboard. It doesn't actually hold the breadboard in position on its own, that's achieved through using the adhesive backing from the breadboard, but it does provide a guide to help position the breadboard, and I think it looks better having the breadboard slightly recessed. This is the battery holder at the front, it's designed to hold four AA batteries in a 2x2 two two holder. The short edges are lower to allow the connector, which is on the end of the battery holder. These holes at the front are for add-ons for future development and then the rest of the holes are for the motor mounts. I've created a separate outer and inner bracket for the motor. You can buy brackets that are just a single size, but doing this allowed me to create a bracket that fits well over the motor. You can just about see that the outer bracket, which fits over the gears, is slightly larger than the inner bracket, which fits tight around the motor. These are then screwed using a screw and nut to hold the motors in place. You need one inner and outer bracket for each of the four motors. If you look at the wiring, you'll see it's a bit of a nest of wires. In this example, I've just used jumper wires to go from the Raspberry Pi to the breadboard with the motor drivers and then from the breadboard to each of the motors. There are four motors, so this needs two dual H-bridge motor drivers. The motor controllers are based around a pair of TB6612 FNG motor controller integrated circuits. These are normally provided as surface mount devices. So to use them on the breadboard, I've used a SparkFun breakout board, which has these mounted on along with the decoupling capacitors. I've already created a video which explains how H-bridge drivers work, so I won't repeat that here. It's also possible to vary the speed using PWM, again explained in another video. Links to those videos are included in the description if you want to find out about how they work. Although the controllers allow for individual motor con speed control, I have just used a single connection from the Raspberry Pi wired to the PWM pins on each of the H-Bridge controllers. This means that all the motors will run at the same speed. But it would be possible to provide individual speed control using additional connections if you prefer. The code to control the robot is written in Python. It's designed as a command line program which takes keystrokes to set the robot travelling in a certain direction. This will allow you to use the same program to control the robot using a keyboard, which can be a wireless keyboard physically connected or through SSH or VNC, or using a USB wireless controller, which I'll explain shortly. I'll explain the code a screen at a time. The code is based around GPIO0 and is loosely based on the code for my other robots, although there are a few extra features and a bit more complexity for it to handle four motors instead of two. See the video description or the website to download the source code. The imports are at the top, are for keyboard handling, I'll explain this shortly, and then the GPIO0 PWM and motor objects. 
It's not possible to use the robot object as that doesn't give us the flexibility that is needed to control the motors independently. The first part of the code shows the pin allocations. There is a single PWM pin for pulse width modulation, which is pin 18. This goes to all the PWM inputs on the motor controllers. There are then pins for each of the motors, which are defined as tuples. There are four motors. The first, MFL, stands for motor front left. Then there's front right, rear left, and then rear right. You can see the pins that have been allocated. And these are all GPIO pin numbers rather than the physical pin numbers. Then a list of motors is created to make it easier to refer to these and you will see the optional argument PWM equals false is included because the speed control is being handled by the PWM pin instead. The PWM out is created as a PWM output device. There is the getch function which handles key presses. This responds directly to the key presses as soon as they are pressed as opposed to the Python input function which would wait on the enter button being pressed. On the next page of code, you can see the different key bindings, which are stored in a Python dictionary. In my other robots, I just use the numeric keys so that the number pad could be used to control the robot. But in this case, I needed to add some more keys. So for example, I've used the four and six keys to move the, the robot left and right, with the one and three keys used to turn. I've also used seven and nine for diagonal forward. This is really sufficient if using the keyboard, but one of the advantages of using a USB game controller is that it gives a few other options, which have been mapped to letter keys in the code, but then mapped to buttons on the controller when using QJoyPad. You can now see the speed value, which is set to 50% output. This is the PWM output equivalent voltage, which does not necessarily translate into half speed. The main part of the code is all enclosed in the while true loop, which sets the appropriate motor directions based on the direction key last pressed. Note that none of these mention speed, as I said previously, that's all handled through the PWM pin rather than through the motor objects being used here. For each direction there is an if statement and then four entries which determine the direction of each of the motors. Potentially the amount of code here could be reduced by using say a Python dictionary and looking up the motor directions from that, but leaving the individual entries makes this easier to understand. Here's another page showing the direction of each of the motors. As you can see, the diagonal movement uses just two motors, with the others set to stop. This was shown earlier in the video, where the arrows showed which motors were moving in which direction. Here's the last of the direction code, and including the stop, which obviously just stops all four motors. The code then gets the next key press. The reason for this being after the motor direction handling is so that on the initial run through the loop all the motors will be set to the stop position before waiting for the first key press. The first key press check is for the quit button. This was originally Q but I remapped that to one of the directions and just arbitrarily chose P because it's well away from the other keys and won't get hit by mistake. You wouldn't normally want to quit from the program, as that would just stop the robot from working, but there is an option there if you wish. The next checks for key press are for a change in speed. I used the plus key, which is on the numeric keypad, but if you press the plus on the text part of the keypad, then that's actually the equals button, as it's just looking at the key pressed rather than the modifiers such as the shift key. At least that's the case for most UK and American standard PC keyboards. There are some other keyboards that would handle this differently, but in that case you should be able to use the equals key instead, or you can update the code with alternative keys. Finally, the last few lines of code are for the direction keys. It checks to see if the key matches one of the keys in the direction dictionary, and if so, then it sets the direction based on that. The code then loops back to the top of the while loop, which will continue to run forever. So once you press the direction key, then the robot will continue in that direction until you press a different key, such as a different direction key, or the stop button, which is 5. If you run that program, then it should now work. Run the program and you can control the robot using the numeric keypad. 
To be able to use the controller or joypad to control the robot, then you can use QJoypad. I've already created a video on configuring QJoypad, so I won't repeat that here. But you can check out this video, link to in the description, and there should be a link at the top of this video now. For QJoypad, the button to keyboard mapping is done using this configuration screen. I've put the config which matches the USB wireless controller that I used on my website. For other controllers, then you can use the configuration screen to create your own keyboard mappings. Finally, here's some more video of the robot driving around, this time using the different features of the Mechanum wheels. In future, I may look at options to move the motor controllers onto a Raspberry Pi hat to reduce the wiring. That should free up the breadboard, which can be used in conjunction with the mounting holes on the front of the robot to add more sensors, etc. In the meantime, I'll be adding more Maker projects on my YouTube channel, so please subscribe if you'd be interested in those. Let me know in the comments what you think, or if there are any other projects you'd like me to cover in future. Thanks for watching.